Hello, Octa developers. Welcome back to our channel. I am Heather Downing, and I'm here with my friend, Brian Demers. And we're going to introduce to you somebody pretty cool. Um, recently, we had a hackathon for some of the new technology we have coming out here at Okta. And we would love to introduce you to the winner of the hackathon. And Brian, tell us, what is this hackathon exactly? Well, we had a hackathon for some of our newer technology. Uh, Okta is introducing what we're branding as the Okta Identity Engine. And that's more some newer features around policies and, and how, how a user uh, logs in. And we can get to that later. But really what, what we're interested in today is we want to talk to Matthew McKenzie, uh, who is the winner of the hackathon with a great project called Goose Clip. So the name Goose Clip comes from uh, Go OS and then clipboard. So it's origin is in a build command for the Go language. I'm a product developer at heart and I have a particular interest in technologies which have a positive impact. So things like medical technology, education environment, and in this particular case, uh, communication and collaboration technologies. So Goose Clip kind of enables us to collaborate a bit more effectively because we have um, faster networks uh, and more secure networks. The catch line is Goose Clip is peer-to-peer -peer as a service, which basically means it's a, a tool which can be utilized by other products to integrate peer-to-peer -peer into their apps. Okay, so peer-to-peer, -peer, can we have like a, an example that you can compare certain apps to? Yeah, I think um, we're, we're all used to hearing about crypto and uh, BitTorrent, but I think some of the more unknown ones are things like um, Spotify, and obviously Zoom and technologies like we're using at the moment are also using peer-to-peer. -peer. So peer-to-peer -peer is uh, fast, it's secure, and it can greatly reduce costs. So uh, egress costs going through the, the centralized server um, quickly can aggregate. And for something like Spotify uh, distributing their, their songs at, at the start of their company, um, it, was, it would be quite expensive for a, a free tier software suite. So they used peers to distribute that music. I never really thought about how uh, the technology behind um, Spotify worked. I mean, I, I use it almost every day and I don't, it's one of those things, you know, it's, it's now the new radio, right? So whereas whatever, 10, 20 years ago, you used to think about how the radio worked and it was just, you know, whatever FM versus AM. And now, now it's a whole other level of, of things to think about. Their, their foundation story is basically based on peer-to-peer. -peer. It's a, what facilitated them to, to build it. So how did you even come up with this idea when you were invited to try out something during the Okta Hackathon? Actually, the Okta Hackathon itself, which stimulated the idea. So the idea of creating an authentication or authorization system for peer-to-peer -peer was quite interesting. Um, I think when you're creating a, a platform as a service that requires authorization, you really don't want to start to control users, uh, well, user repositories because companies don't want to give that up, right? Like you don't want to give your user base to a, a software suite. So I, I had to come up with a, a process to perform the authentication authorization without actually requiring admin access to the user store. Mm -hmm. So all simulated by the Okta Hackathon. That's so cool. Have, have, did did you, have you, um, were you working on Goose Clip be before the hackathon or was this an idea in the back of your head or what was sort of the, uh, the, the genesis of this? Yeah, so Goose Clip actually started out as something different. So Go OS Clipboard, um, it was a clipboard synchronization tool. Um, I was quite frustrated because I used to use a Linux, a Mac and a Windows machine and they weren't interoperable at all. Right. Um, obviously, people who use a lot of Apple products, they're used to you copy on a clipboard and you can paste on your, your iPad, for example. But uh, across operating systems, that's not really the case. Um, so that was originally using gRPC, which worked well on the local network, but um, wasn't great for cross-network stuff. So I started moving towards P2P technology, and I realized how um, outlandishly difficult it was. <laughs> I So I, I kind of thought that the P2P aspect of what I was building was actually probably more important than the original product. So Goose Clip kind of evolved into a, the thing it is today. Very cool. I, I really I really like how it started as a clipboard tool. I remember uh, this was years ago, but I've, I've done this a couple of times too, where you, you play with a couple new technology stacks and, and you know, clip, clipboard is one of those foundational things that you use every day, but um, the synchronization is terrible. And uh, even, even with some of the tools that are out there, you know, it's it's still frustrating. And 
you know, the network limitations and, and all of that. Um, so it's really cool that this is morphed into, into uh, this more general thing. Yeah, I think I ran across some code from Microsoft in the 1970s. It was pretty scary stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're dealing with all the the, the, uh, the MIME types of different clipboard objects, and that's a whole yeah. other uh, thing you can go down. <laughs> Has yeah, anybody else maps. started using this too? Have you, or you, you kept it all to yourself? as kind of like your own pet project. Uh, so no, no one's using it yet. Um, I'm building it out properly with like um, infrastructures code and um, multiple environments and things like that. Uh, I used to be CTO of a company, so the idea of building it properly from the start is quite important to me, uh, especially with a product like this is where it should be security based. Very cool. So uh, jumping back to the hackathon of how you heard about this altogether, I, I, I want to call out already, I, sh I shared the link earlier and we'll have the link in the description. Um, but really the, your, your demo, like, even even the product aside, um, the, the demo blew us away. All of the judges, so I, I was one of the judges. All of the judges, hands down, were like, "This demo was amazing." So, uh, I mean, I don't know. You mean you could you could have probably just whipped up just the demo portion and and, and impressed us, but I, I <laughs> you know, you sent us some code too, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, so have have you done a lot of hackathons in the past, or was this? Or are you just, a, a, uh, you know, you like all this speaking and everything? <laughs> <laughs> this is my first hackathon. Um, I got put onto it by a friend of mine. Uh, but I've made videos before. So um, used to do a few YouTube videos at the inception of YouTube, right when uh, they weren't so professional. But I got my Premiere Pro, Pro membership recently, so I thought I'd better use it. <laughs> no, it was great. The, we uh, loved the whole, the whole reel. It was awesome. The intro was actually a bit of a joke. So I say Goose Clip is a, a, as, a, as P2P as a service. And then she kind of sings, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. I mean, it's a hackathon too, right? You I mean, you know, the big thing is is sort of prov proving the point. And then, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I never really thought about um, as, as much until recently as the selling of the idea of the hackathon at the end is just as important, if not more important than, than the product itself because you still need to convey what you did clearly to people. So um, if there was anything that I've taken away is, is it's even the the presentation portion is even more important. Not only um, are you time boxed, but you you also have to have presentation skills. I participated in several startup weekends uh, where I, we had to come up with the whole thing, architecture, actually had to build it out, then put together a demo reel as a whole. I had like 48 hours to do it. So uh, hats off to you. This is not easy for anybody who actually goes and take, checks it out for it to be done in this time. My gosh, you should be really proud of it. I think uh, what you said, Brian, there is like you have to convey the entire story within a very short amount of time. So um, Goose Clip is a, basically a library or a platform. So in order to demonstrate it, I had to build other products that use it. So it was hard to convey that well the i'm showing these products they're not necessarily the platform that we're talking about here it's the thing that's powering it all was this your first time working with any octa products it was um as i said earlier i used to be cto of a company so the idea of um using octa was quite familiar with compliance and stuff like that uh, the requirement for sso was quite important but i don't think we ever got quite got around to it um but i i knew of octa and i knew it's kind of a global brand when it comes to this kind of stuff. So how did it actually work out? Um, this is, remember, this is new stuff that we're rolling out, right? So if you could be totally honest, like what were the pros and cons of creating a, a like a peer-to-peer -peer app with Okta? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's specific to peer-to-peer, -peer, but um, it, I found the experience a mixed bag. So it was really good to, um, the documentation was obviously amazing. And as a developer, that's super important. and the diversity and power of what you could do was amazing. So I've not quite used an auth authentication platform like that before. Um, I thought a few simple things were missing. So things like um, regex kind of validation on, on custom fields didn't exist. Uh, mm -hmm. Might be a feature in development still. I know this is a, an early release. And I found uh, things like passwordless sign-in, I actually couldn't pull it off. So uh, oh, <laughs> it's yeah. sad for me. <laughs> 
It is uh, it is a newer feature for sure. Um, there are definitely some things that we're enhancing as we go with it. Um, and so there's unfortunately a little bit of a, a trick to get it to go. It depends on the situation. Uh, so we are mm -hmm. definitely revisiting our docs for that. But this is the only way that we get better is if we actually ask people who are actively involved in trying to, in your case, like in, invent an application, what their experience was. So we would love to know anybody who's watching as well, like what your experiences are with all of our new features that are coming out. Cause there's a lot all at once. We have like our entire engineering department has been doing so many different things. It isn't just one. So feedback is the ultimate. Now, have you added auth before to other apps? Um, or, or was this also your first experience with that too? Uh, yeah, I've made plenty of apps in my time. Um internal tooling and things like that and obviously yeah, app apps for our phones but um this is the first time with uh, such a sophisticated suite i think yes was there a particular uh, option i guess that you saw that um really kind of struck you as more powerful that you didn't expect uh i really well the only reason i could really create goose Club was that you have really powerful um custom claims injectors into the tokens. So uh, Goose Corp actually works by extracting information from the tokens, and then it creates a um, cryptographic hash of that information and stores it in its own lookup table. So that's how I can do something like um, an at Brian tag to, to peer discover between users. So it's actually not storing any personal information about Brian, it's just storing a reduced hash, which obviously can't be reversed. Oh yeah, we have a, a like, a a hooks API as well that helps allows you to, um, I guess, uh, kind of hitchhike some additional data into any token as well from an external source if you needed to add a little bit more. Uh, so that's something else that we're going to be coming out with samples for in the future too. Yeah, that was useful. So I, I used that with uh, GitHub, for example, to take the GitHub user to create the, again, sorry, Brian, but the at Brian, um, user tag within Goose Clip. So it automatically transformed those usernames across, which was obviously great. I, I, I didn't know that. So that that's uh that's even a, a bigger bonus. But the custom claims is definitely one of my one of my favorite features, as you mentioned. And and um I think it allows it removes a lot of the need for to for the storage portion, right? I mean you don't always want to store your data with a third party, right? So but but there's there's some decorative data that you can add to the octa side that can make you know your applications easier or you know a third some third party so very cool. Is this something that you would consider being proprietary or more of an open source library? Um, I'm I'm a big fan of open source, but uh, I think at at this stage proprietary just for the fact of security, like uh, until you get security audits and you know you really build this out and have a team of engineers on it, I wouldn't. Obviously, obfuscation is not a great source of uh, security, but I, I think it takes a while to get to the point where I would feel safe to open source it, if you know what I mean. I get it. I, I, I took a, um, a library through security audit uh, last year, I think it was at some point, and it was different. I've, I've done through you know a whole bunch of internal audits at various companies, but never through a third party. So that it was a it was a unique experience. So I can I can totally understand that. Were there any unique challenges um, that a, a developer who's never done a peer to peer application might run into when it comes to auth or IAM? Well, I think the thing with peer to peer is it's it's normally either anonymous or unauthenticated altogether. So when you think about crypto, it's anonymous, and um, let's say something like BitTorrent, it's unauthenticated. I'm not verified that, but basically you don't log in or confirm who you are. Uh, but I think there's a whole world of technologies out there which could benefit from peer-to-peer, -peer, which is authenticated. So things like, uh, imagine Zoom or, um, again, Spotify, you, you want to be logged in and you want to know that you're connected to the right people. And um, I think we all remember the Zoom bombing that happened a while ago. We don't really want that to happen. Unique challenges. I think the whole thing's quite unique. I, I've not seen really a peer-to-peer -peer as a service type thing before, but... Um, it's definitely an interesting world. I think it's an untapped world, uh, this this authenticated and authorized peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah, I think the only thing that I've run into, I mean, I'm kind of big into crypto, full disclosure, <laughs> but it is some of the services that are functioning like banks that also want to know who you are for tax purposes. And so sometimes that and regulation as it comes down the line. Yeah, I've seen some, um, some interesting 
authentication processes there, like uh, using a phone number, for example, it's, it's obviously hashed and stored on, on the ledger, uh, but it allows you to do similar things like this at user tag um, referencing. So you don't need those big addresses, big crypto addresses. So there's lots of interesting ways to get around this um, public or zero trust um, authentication. When it comes to how this sparked like our imagination when we were watching it, to your point earlier that it was this peer to peer is kind of a little bit of an untapped area and I think it's only going to grow. So is there something that in the future you really would like to also create? Maybe it's a, an additional app separate from this, or do you see like a big future, like to expand this offering? I don't want to confuse everyone, but uh, goose clip is actually, um, more of a, a company name, I think. And uh, Goose Link is the product that we, the pair to pair as a service. So uh, it's a foundational product that allows you to build other products. So um, within the hack hackathon video, I built the Goose CLI. So it's a tool built on Goose Link. So you can see how you can start to build numerous different things. I'm also building a game at the moment on it. So uh, I think it's as a foundational product, it, it should facilitate loads of really, really interesting products to evolve. How'd you come up with the name? Why Goose? <laughs> uh, it was actually something my my mom said, <laughs> Goose Link. She just got it wrong and I thought that was funny. So <laughs> usually everything is founded a little bit on a joke. Yeah, name, naming things is usually, you know, that's the that's the hardest problem, right? Related to identity, um, you know, I, I, I know that you're, you guys are both more into the crypto bits than, than I am, but I really had a high hopes for things like identity proofing, like, um, like Keybase and those types of tools. Um, but they got bought and sort of uh, less 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 funding over there, I guess, from now. So I think it's really cool. But I really like how things like Goose, Goose Clip can help sort of help bridge those gaps too, as well as like, you know, I can authenticate, you know, with some other provider, but I can use my tools, uh, you know, like like Goose Link or, or whatever, um, you know, with, with my third party applications and not have to worry about it. With Goose Clip and crypto as well, I know, sorry, Brian, this isn't exactly related, but the you could combine these two things where Goose Clip is like a distribution of content and crypto is almost the, uh, you can use smart contracts and stuff to, uh, let's say, pass along decryption keys after a payment or, you know, something like that, where you, you start to combine two, two worlds of paired -paired technologies and you can start to imagine quite powerful things emerging because crypto itself is not very good for um, large scale right. distribution. I guess well, it depends on was, which on which um, which one you choose for smart contracts. Do you have one in particular that seems to work better that you like? Oh, shilling a crypto coin on on YouTube. No, it's I don't not know. a coin. It has, it, this is really from like a development standpoint. Like regardless of uh, whatever you want to keep, but developing with the smart contract is really the question. Which one do you feel is a little easier in terms of integration? I really like uh, Alrond, which is a. a technology evolving out of uh, Romania at the moment. The reason being that it's, uh, you can build with Wasm, um, basically Wasm engines. So you can compile any of your code to it and uh, execute smart contracts. You basically develop in any language, but also they've kind of rebuilt everything uh, to be internet scale. So it's a third gen uh, network. The whole purpose of it being easy to uh, access from people like us. This is the, actually the company that does the phone number. So um, they turn your phone number into a, a hero tag, which allows you to send money without actually knowing your own address. So I think it really makes it a lot easier to to work with for just normal people. And that's the next stage of of crypto. I've seen someone say um, crypto at the moment is like windows in the 1970s you know like it's only for people who want to program off the back of a magazine or uh, really get into the guts of a technology but it will become a more prolific technology eventually i couldn't agree more i'm seeing a lot of options uh, not just in you know banking and, and such like that but many different options for it and we're going to be asked i think developers are going to be expected to know how to interact with smart contracts. So that'll be, that's my opinion, of course. Sorry to nerd out on you, Brian, there. No, it's all good. I, I find this stuff fascinating. I just, I just haven't, uh, I haven't gotten into the hype yet. You know, I, I know it's important. I know it will be important. I think Matthew brings up a really great point about how, um, when it be all, when these things become more accessible, 
right? I feel like that's really when people can start to understand and sort of simplify these diagrams as opposed to just like, you know, and every time I read about crypto, it's, it's, well, for one, every time I read about crypto, it's like, you know, the energy cost, right? And, and that's like, that's a separate, separate problem, right? But, but that's what everyone sort of fixates on. But, you know, as far as what we're concerned with is more, how do we actually use it? Right? Like, how do I build things with it? How do we build things that aren't just finance based as well? I think it's quite interesting. Um, I, I think that the energy problem has been solved with proof of stake. So um, that's actually one of the main drivers behind me picking a certain technology. So obviously, uh, Bitcoin, and Ethereum are out because they're not yet proof of stake. But I think by creating technologies you can combine with, let's say things like goose clip and, and crypto, you can start to create new things that aren't just let's trade money for money. We can start to build real products that um, have real world applications that we're used to. I'm excited to hear about what you do next with this, because I think you really get um, like new possibilities, which is what we're looking for in the first place when it came to uh, which entries in our hackathon like really would stand out is how do you not reinvent the same wheel? How do you like invent teleportation, you know, <laughs> let's forget about the wagon. And what if you do, what do we do next that hasn't been done? And that's part of why we were so excited to be able to get to interview you today. So thanks for coming on to our channel and doing this. Yeah. So what, what's next for you, Matthew? Um, so I'm thinking to, to build out Goose Clip as a, a proper platform. So um, I think allowing users to create their own organizations to start to build with this uh, in a secure way and uh, see where it goes from there. Does that mean Wonderful. that anybody will be able to use it soon? It should be, yes. Uh, watch the gooseclip.com at the moment. It's just a, a crappy little flutter uh, single page app, but. <laughs> Do you have any crowd, like uh, like crowdfunding for it so that you can afford to keep, you know, scaling it out? Uh, no, I'm a bit of a bootstrapper when it comes to development. Cause uh, I think once you, once you get that funding in, you kind of start the clock. I've seen a few um, startups fail getting any kind of funding in. So it's a, it's a pitfall I want to avoid. Well, we're looking forward to seeing um, more of how this builds out. So I want to thank Matthew and Heather for joining us. Heather, you did a great job asking all the questions. I wish I wish I could ask questions th this well too. And, and of course, Matthew, great job on the hackathon entry. We wish you uh, the best of luck uh, going forward and definitely keep us posted on how everything works out. <laughs>